Hello and welcome back to my channel. We're just on the way to Cleve Abbey and I think we're nearly there. In we go to the car park. We're going to try and get in the shade because we've got food in the car. Because <laughs> we're travelling home we are from a lovely stay in Exmoor. Well, I don't know if this is the right car park or not. You might get an update from us in a minute. I need to swap my hats around. I've had a woolly hat on all day, but the sun's come out now, so I'm back to sun hat again. We're not at all convinced we're in the right car park, but we'll find out in a minute, I dare say. Yeah, we think it's the right one. I mean, it was signposted with the English Heritage sign and a brown sign towards it. So there is parking for disabled this way. We're just walking over a little bridge here to get in, actually. It's the current opening time, so I'm filming this on the 1st of June, 2023. We're heading towards the ticket sales bit and the entrance. There's a Latin stone carving above the archway there. And do you know what it means? It means gate be open, shut to no honest person. And I know that because it's written down here on a little board. This one, in fact. So we're heading in. We haven't bought our tickets yet. We've just come in through. Now, my boyfriend is a one for liking nice ceilings and I must admit that's worth a shot, that one. Very nice timber. We still haven't even bought a ticket. We haven't reached the ticket office yet, but this is the almonry. The porter handed out food and drink to the poor here. The almonry could be reached from inside or outside the precinct when the gates were closed. All right, okay. Oh, that's nice. Not much to see, but you know, it's all empty obviously now, but it's amazing to think of the activity that used to take place here. I'm gonna get going, otherwise I'm gonna spend more time on the entrance than the inside bit. <laughs> It's ever so quiet here. I haven't seen a single soul yet. Look at that. Oh, that's stunning, isn't it? Wowie. That's what we just walked through. I think I see Jesus there on the cross. Tickets are this way. A couple of little picnic benches and there's somebody enjoying a drink there. Oh, it's quite scenic, isn't it? And spectacular from the outside. Let's go and get the tickets. Cleve Abbey was founded over 800 years ago and look, the first abbot and his monks arrived in 1198. Came from Lincolnshire. There's not much left of these to see, but they were bread ovens once upon a time from the later medieval monastic kitchens. Amazing to think bread was really made there all those hundreds of years ago. There's a sort of introduction as you first come in. So lots of things to read, a bit of history, etc. I quite like the way the information is presented on these big boards. You get your title, you get a bit of something in big font. So if you only want a little gist and walk on, if you don't like to stand and read everything, that's for you. There's the monk's trail bit, which is for the children. I quite often like the children's bit best, I must admit. And then you've got a bit more detail here and some illustrations as well. It says here on the children's bit that the monks used the water from the river to flush their toilets or latrines, a luxury that most medieval folk could only dream of. See, this one is talking about how they had to manage the local water to use the things that they needed it for. If you look at this illustration here that was done in the 13th century, it shows a ship being wrecked and it says that the monks had the right of wreck. They could go and um, pilfer it, you know, and glean the riches that they could from it, lame the contents. We've come into the next chamber, quite a simple one with not much in it, but there is this old oven here. I don't know how well the camera's picking it up because it's very dark. Heading outside now. I just came out of there. It's absolutely stunning, isn't it? Some foundation remains by the look of it. I wonder what these big round things were. Perhaps they were pillars. Not much to see in here now, but at one time it would have been the library. It says the library at Cleve is unusual in being a whole room rather than just cupboards built into walls. The books, written by hand and very expensive to produce, were cared for by the sacrist. You have to really get your imagination going to picture it nowadays, don't you? Oh, there's a big entrance here. Look, massive. This flight of stairs led up to the dormitory where they used to go and sleep. Look how old that door is. Wowie. Let's see what's up here. 
I wonder what the sleeping conditions would have been like for the monks. I did read on a board downstairs that it wasn't very comfortable and they didn't have a fire to warm them. These tiles. I read somewhere downstairs that the tiles weren't just for decoration, but they also bore coats of arms as well. Mm, yeah, they look like they might be actually, don't they? Oh, there's more here. They must be ever so ancient, isn't they? I love looking at really, really ancient art. I feel like I'm connecting for a moment with that maker, the human being that created these. I feel like I'm a creative person, you know, and I like that feeling when you look back at something you just created. And I feel like I kind of latch onto that feeling that they must have had, you know, and I imagine how they felt when they looked on with pride at what they had made. Ah, oh, so this was the dormitory, as I mentioned earlier, and here's an artist's impression of how it may have looked all, you know, lined up there. You can see the walls look painted, don't they? Red and white. This is how it may have looked in the 13th century, but this is a little bit more modern, 16th century. I'm assuming they would have used records and based their illustration on that. They would have had wooden chests at the end of their beds and that's where they kept their clothes. Right, I'm going back down again now. Ancient doors. Look at those old metal nails there. Wow. I've come back down now. I'm just looking in some rooms off the courtyard and wondering what they were. Aha, uh -huh, it says here. It's the parlour, it says. The office to the prior. I've just had a very, very interesting guide come in. Do you see those designs there? The circular ones. Looks like, you know, when you get a compass when you're a kid for the first time with the lid in it and you do circles and stuff. Well, it's medieval, apparently, done with um, dividers. He called it medieval graffiti. Over here we've got some more as well. Do you see those? Now, the monks weren't allowed to talk. They had this vows of silence, but they were allowed to talk in here. It was the only place they could. And they could only talk about the work, basically. Uh, he was saying upstairs in the dormitory, not only did they not have any heating, any fires, but there wasn't any glass in the windows, obviously, in those days, just oil cloth. They had a right old draft going through, so it was a very horrible life, really, but that was part of their existence. He was also saying that this is somewhere which served as a hospital and poor people of the community could come here to receive treatment, so when it went... That wasn't there anymore. They'd have to go to the wise woman of the village and have their herbs, but they were all got burnt as witches then later on. Now moving on, there's a lodging room. And very fancy it would have been. Yet more graffiti in here. Do you see this big circle here done with the dividers again? So symmetrical and perfect. So you have the mortal world and the celestial world, and there's a bridge there going across between the two. So this would have been a lodging room. Very fancy it would have been at the time as well. Lovely big fireplace, not like in the monks' bedrooms. They had their own toilet with running water. Let's have a look. Oh, I wonder if that's the remains of it there. I'm not really sure what I'm looking at. You know, when it's all sort of pared back like this, it's hard to tell, isn't it? Oh, well, that looks like it, doesn't it? Let's climb in. That looks very much like it would have been a loo to me. The view from the loo, if it is the loo. Because, as I say, it's quite hard to know. <laughs> I always do like these artists' impressions. So this would have been, as it looked, you know, more or less in the 16th century. You could have had people to come and do your laundry for you and everything, it was all very fancy. The monks normally had to live this life of servitude and humility and discomfort. But if they were just about coming to the end of their days, maybe had a couple of months left to live, they could get lodging in here right at the end. I'm going to head on to the next room and see what's next. I wonder if it's more lodging rooms. There's a guy wandering around, a guide, and he just sort of comes and starts chatting to you about what you're looking at. It's really good. He's so knowledgeable and interesting and speaks in a really understandable way. This had been a farm later on, and they actually, I'm back in the lodging room here, the lodging chambers, they actually did have cattle and things like that sleeping in here later on, you know, after it finished being fancy lodgings. The guide was saying it was absolutely amazing that that graffiti survived all the animals being in here. Through there, there's some ancient tiles preserved on the floor and a bit of a walkway around it, so hopefully we can get in there and have a closer look. Oh, I wonder what's up here. Should we go and see? 
Oh, that ceiling though, oh my goodness. Ah, oh, this is where they had their dindins. How it may have looked in the 16th century. Oh, I'm feeling quite peckish now, actually. It's a while since I had my breakfast. Do you see the picture of Jesus on the cross there? Well, if we move over, we see a photograph, an actual photograph, in which that was still visible, and that's in the late 19th century. Now, it looks like this all painted over. There are some pretty amazing carvings there, all the way along the edge of the top of the walls, where it meets the ceiling. Just look at the details here. Now, apparently, there's the face of the green man. Can you make that out? If you look very carefully, the two eyes there, nose, ears. He's got foliage all growing out of his mouth. It says that the green man man images were frequently used to decorate buildings in the Middle Ages, but they were usually placed in prominent locations. And it's, it's kind of strange that they're here because you can't even see them from ground level. But they're literally all the way around. It must have been hours and hours and hours of work gone into carving those. And if you look right on the ceiling as well, we've got all these little details dotted around at regular intervals throughout. Here's a little bit about the refectory, just in case you want to pause and read the information. Off to the farmhouse range now. This little chamber off the corridor here is known as the Painted Chamber, and you see that? Painted in the 15th century, the 1400s. I mean, what? That's absolutely amazing to think of that. Heading into the farmhouse range now, these rooms were once part of a farmhouse built in the 17th and 18th centuries after the suppression of the abbey. There's a bit of recycling went on here with this fireplace. You see that lintel across the top there? Guess what that used to be? Coffin lid from the 13th century. Coming back out of there now, I've spied a staircase made out of wood. I'm going to pop up and see what's there. Very steep. Upper chamber. Heading back down now, this very steep spiral staircase. There are some artefacts to look at up here. Oh yeah, some bits and bobs of stonework to look at and some things to read about those. And there too, and what's that? Some information on tile making, I think. I decided to surprise my other half with an ice lolly. He said he's sitting under the tree out the back somewhere. Ah, got a bit of IB cam going on. Surprise! <laughs> mm. Mm. Oh, nice, it's like a passion fruity one, isn't it? Exotic. It's a nice lolly with the view again. Look at that beautiful building, isn't it? And we've got little sort of ruins like the original foundations, would you say? They are the foundations of the latrine block. Foundations of the latrine block. Well, there we are. You see that thing there, that entrance there where I'm pointing? That's actually the exit that the monks would have gone through when they needed a wee in the night to go to the latrines because this is the remains of the latrine block. So that would have taken them directly into it and there was running water and everything to flush it away. Very modern for its time. Now there was also a church at the far end there, the remains are still there now, but it kind of copped it, it got destroyed didn't it in the uh, as part of the dissolution of the monasteries unfortunately, so nothing really to be seen today of that. I was looking earlier, you might remember those big sort of circular shapes on the floor and wondering what they were, well they were column bases, big massive ones. I've just been told by my very uh, informative boyfriend who's been going around reading things <laughs> and actually <laughs> remembering it unlike me. <laughs> so as I'm sitting here I was saying to my boyfriend, what's that wooden building there and he said well that's where the tiled floor is he said originally it was the refectory before it moved into the other building you know that other room that I showed you and so the tiled floor was the floor of the refectory and let's go and have a quick look at it oh, just rounding the bend and just those windows look absolutely amazing don't they oops I've got the hiccups now after yomming that delicious ice cream Oh, I've left my other lens over there on the bench with my boyfriend. I can't zoom in for you, but it looks very amazing. All those coats of arms there. Oh, actually, look, we can go right down. I thought it was blocked off, but it isn't. And there's a bench all the way around. Look, so you can just sit and look at it. Look, and you can see it's actually sort of dug out. Look, I wonder if 
that would have been filled in with paint and levelled off, or if it was meant to be that shape. Must be ever so old, mustn't it? I'll go and read the board and see how old it is. Well, the first refectory was actually demolished in the 15th century, and this has survived that, so it's obviously older than that. Well, they think it might have been made to celebrate the marriage, which took place in 1272, so I don't actually know the exact date. It says that pavement was actually buried, because the building got demolished, obviously, and it kind of all got forgotten about and just buried, but then they, um, they dug it up and rediscovered it. 1876, they found it, look. I think we're gonna be heading off in a minute. There were sheep in the next field, a bit of a throwback from its farming past. <laughs> I wanted to just get a shot of this latrine as it was back in the day for you. Look, can you see? Right, hang on, let's just move the camera up. So that's the dormitory that we were in earlier, and that's the exit through which they would have accessed the latrines. There are the remains of them today. And as you see, there was a bench, and they all, you know, sat at these holes they weren't private they didn't have partitions by the look of it and so there was like a trench down there with water flowing through it so they do their doings down there and it would get flushed away just like that isn't that amazing and before we head off let's just have a quick look at the remains of the church so i've come around the other side you see that doorway there the doorway that was the doorway that led out of the dormitory and the monks used to get out of bed at one in the morning to go and pray and they'd come straight out of there here it is in picture form they'd go down those stairs and then they'd be in this amazing palatial looking church you can see the bases of these enormous columns still today i'll just pop that there for anybody who wants to pause and read a lot of people do is the children's bit look i get woken up at one o'clock in the morning to climb down the cold stairs for our night service i then go back to bed until six o'clock in the morning when i come back to church for high mass we're heading back out to the car park now we've had a really nice trip actually did you find that interesting yeah, he's, uh, he's nodding, yeah. I did too, I'm really glad we came actually. It was very peaceful and calm and just interesting. We seem to have come at a very quiet time. The guide was so informative. He was just kind of wandering around and when people were noticing things, he'd come up and support what you were seeing with some inside information, that sort of thing. Anyway, we've got a feast of food in the car that we're gonna do a, a DIY picnic out of now. Like we haven't made any sandwiches or anything, but there's bread, there's cheese, there's all sorts of goodies. So we're gonna go and um, assemble something in the shade of a tree in the car park. So loved that. We walked along the road to get out of the car park actually, but looking at it, we should have just walked along this path here and exited through this gate directly opposite the main entrance. That's what we should have done. So I would advise that if you come. Well, we're outside, we're under a tree and look at the feast we're about to have. We're gonna just sort of dive in and assemble bits and bobs. We've got bread and butter and Philadelphia. We've got cold cans of Coke, Marmite rice cakes, Bombay mix, more Marmite. Oh, so yummy. Chopped up peppers and cucumber, there's salad, strawberries, blueberries, grapes. Plum tomatoes, brie, oh, I just need to dig in. Before I tuck into my delicious feast, I'd like to say a big thank you to the best of Exmoor for supporting these videos by putting us up this week free of charge. So thank you so much to them. They rent out holiday rentals. I'll leave a link in the description to all the rentals that they have. So if you're interested in staying in the area of beautiful Exmoor, do feel free to have a look down at the link to see what's there. Right, I'm going to eat. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please give it a like if you happen to like it. Subscribe down below to watch more videos from me and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.